Hello fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your Mars Retrograde special horoscope going from late July 2020 right to the very beginning of January 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is the overview looking at what Mars Retrograde will mean for us for the collective and if you stay tuned to the end you'll get to see preview horoscopes for each and every sign this is the first minute of much longer videos each video for each sign is over 20 minutes long at the very least and it is each video that is available for download on my website nadiashaw.com and of course available for free for superstars in the superstar space at nadiashaw.com so again stay tuned to the end now throughout this video you might hear a dog barking that dog is not biggie that dog is outside and he doesn't want to stop there he goes again and so let's just consider it percussion okay actually i really like that dog he's really cute he's a huge uh, rottweiler uh, in my neighbor's balcony and uh he's just so lovely and i love that he's like a little alarm lets us know when anybody's walking by at all even way across the street uh, but let's just send him a burst of love and i'm hoping with the whole mic setup i have it won't be too much of an issue now if you're wondering about biggie you may hear him as well but he's more rustling about as he moves around the sofa that he's sleeping on uh, right next to me but let's dive in for the collective because i think that this mars retrograde season is going to be incredibly powerful and of all the huge things that have happened astrologically this year and have yet to come it may be this mars retrograde season that ends up being the most important and that is because mars is what we feel viscerally it is where emotion and intensity combine into our physical form where we're actually able to feel what it is our lessons our motivations our a sense of being fired up it becomes an experience that is embodied thanks to Mars with Mars it is one thing to feel things right there are lots of indications of feeling stirring in a very strong way it's another thing to consider what you do about it and with Mars we are encouraged to take action now what is especially notable about this larger mars retrograde season well it comes down to one word and that is squares squares are astrological alignments that indicate tension but they also bring with them tremendous motivation it is squares that say do something take action something has got to change and a lot of us are going to be feeling especially motivated to move towards meaningful change when considering how it is that people view and viewed the world uh, there are two areas of study called cosmology and cosmogony so cosmology means world view right this is a uh, a lot of what astrology is rooted in uh, sort of ancient cosmologies and then there is cosmogony and cosmogony means the origin of the world and so every place in history in the world and cultures has a theory of understanding how the world was created and when we look at ancient traditions they often talk about some source some beginning some core and from there an emanation coming forward and the next step tends to be a duality and this duality has often been characterized as masculine or feminine now i'm not necessarily talking about who's a man and who's a woman in our present day world uh, one of the great things about living in our modern world is that we recognize that the universe is very diverse we as people are very diverse uh, and in terms of our gender identities we can be very diverse as well but i'm talking more in terms of principles the masculine principle and the feminine principle it is mars that speaks very powerfully to the sacred masculine principle now with 
masculine energy and feminine energy you can have the sacred feminine and the sacred masculine we also have the toxic feminine and the toxic uh, masculine as well and so we can think about this um, it is masculine that is the active principle it is one of action and intention it is one of forward movement it is the feminine as principle that represents receptivity and intuition and allowing. Now, these are healthy and sacred ways of understanding these energies. And then there are more toxic ways of using these energies. It is when action is not rooted in wisdom that it can become impulsive, um, needlessly competitive and angry. It is when uh, femininity isn't rooted in wisdom uh, that it can become overly passive and manipulative. And so when we look at Mars, we want to consider how it is that this energy is asking to be channeled. That is going to be very important. With all these squares, with a retrograde, highlighting, um, Mars energy, masculine energy, inviting us to contemplate more deeply how we use our own action. There may very well be this contrast that presents itself to us. What are healthy ways to use the masculine principle and what are toxic ways to use the masculine principle as well? And so with the squares, there is tension. Now tension can bring with it great growth. Uh, great progress rooted in what our actions show us but knowing that we also have to keep moving forward and one of the most wonderful ways to understand Mars is knowing that there is something within you that is worth fighting for it is about being a spiritual warrior that is the higher end of understanding Mars sacred energy and so with the squares we are going to be invited to find that understanding within ourselves to understand within ourselves what it means to be a spiritual warrior on behalf of our spirit on behalf of our wisdom to own our power to take action and to move forward the retrograde can bring with it reflection it can bring with it an opportunity to contemplate and consider more deeply to ensure that our actions are rooted in wisdom. But of course, this is Mars. It is an active principle, which means it is asking for something to do. If you don't give Mars something to do, well, then that is when the energy can become needlessly impulsive or uh, prone to anger. But thankfully, the retrograde in that case can actually work to our advantage, inviting us to be reflective. Now, when a planet is changing directions that is especially close to the Earth, its energies become that much more heightened during a retrograde as well. It is a powerful time where the ancients believed that the energy of the planet was at once um, weaker than it may otherwise be, but also more intense having a greater ability to be a force of transformation or at the very least a force of allowing a pathway towards contemplation and cultivation of wisdom that is the great opportunity available to us now to find that core of wisdom now if you want to know more about cosmogony according to plato and how it connects to an astrological sky i'm just going to make a very quick note of my book the body and the cosmos which did debut as a number one uh, new release in new age astrology and if you want to know more dive in more to the origin story and understanding sacred masculine energy of mars you might want to have a look at my book prayers to the sky now let's talk about some of the big moments of this larger season it is going to be uh, july 26 when mars will enter shadow and even though on the surface at first I feel like it may not necessarily be known right away. It is very important that we pay attention to what is happening for the collective and in our own journeys as well. Because whatever is taking place at this time will be understood differently once we navigate further in this extended Mars retrograde season. But it will be as we enter August that the energies are going to become very intense rather quickly. It will be on the 4th of August that Mars will connect with precision 
in square to Jupiter, and it will be nine days later that Mars will connect with Pluto. Now, Jupiter and Pluto are traveling close in the sky throughout most of 2020. It is this ongoing connection of them that is defining much of 2020 for us, in particular, the intensity of this time. Well, add Mars to the mix, and it makes the intensity feel like it's that much more on the surface, that much more visceral. It is going to be that much more necessary for us to be mindful of how we are interacting with others, of the ways in which we are participating in uh, power games, manipulation, where it is that perhaps we're not using our own sacred masculine energy in healthy ways. But for a lot of people out there, this may represent a time, the first three weeks of August in particular, that may feel stressful, uh, that may feel like we're pouring a whole lot of energy in a particular direction, fighting for something without necessarily feeling that progress that we want right away. The connection of Mars and Pluto in particular, uh, that is one of collectively as well, many people wanting to take action, wanting to be a force of meaningful transformation. But what meaningful transformation and a more ideal outcome could be, can be very different based on the individual. There are those of us who are motivated by higher principles of love and wisdom, but even with that motivation, what that means, what that looks like for the collective, it can vary tremendously based on whom it is that you ask. And I do think that this may be one of those times where we see that tension, where there are people who want to transform the world in one way and move us collectively towards that understanding of the individual participating in the larger society. Uh, I'm looking at the fact that Pluto is moving through a part of the sky a sign, Capricorn, that has to do with the structures that hold the world together, that have to do with power structures as well. It is Aries that is the sign of the individual. Mars being at home in the sign of Aries is especially powerful here. And so it is the individual that is trying to affect changes to the structures that hold the world together here. So we have these moments of tension more personally. It may feel like times that feel especially tiring, but it is going to be as we navigate beyond this moment, right? This moment of needing to practice self-care, needing to understand what's worth taking action towards and maybe what isn't. And it is as we navigate further, in particular, once we get into September. September 9 is when Mars will stand still and officially go retrograde. Um, it is going to be under the same sky that Jupiter is going to slow down to a standstill and officially go direct just three days later. It will also be on the same day that Mars goes retrograde that the Sun will speak in supreme harmony with Jupiter. This is a conversation that astrologers call a trine, and it is considered one of the most fortunate aspects to take place over the course of a given year. In fact, the Sun trines Jupiter only twice a year, every year. And then of course meets Jupiter in the sky once a year. Now that meeting of the sun and Jupiter is considered the luckiest day of the year. That's one way to understand it. But the sun trying Jupiter, that is a very close second. And so consider that both Mars and Jupiter are especially strong in the sky at this time. On the one hand, there's a whole lot of hope. There's a whole lot of optimism and positive energy and a belief in wonderful things. But we've also got this intensity of emotion that is going to be taking place, a, a sense of people being especially inspired to consider what action to take and emotions very much on the surface, while the belief that great things are possible is there as well. But it is going to be as we navigate further, the very end of September, beginning of October, I actually think of this larger Mars retrograde season, this is going to be the most important, the most on the surface moment that is set to take place. And that's because it involves a couple of different things. So September 29, 
is a huge day. Not only will Mars connect with Saturn, remember Mars at this point hasn't been retrograde too long, is especially strong in its home sign, connecting with Saturn, but Saturn is also in its home sign of Capricorn at this point, strong in its own right, but more importantly, Saturn will be stationary direct. Saturn will be standing still in the sky and slowly starting to move forward. So both planets are traveling quite close, holding this conversation that isn't just gonna be a moment, but feels extended. We will feel the build up towards it and we'll feel it for days afterwards as well. And this to me says reality check moment. Saturn can be a principle of restriction, of limitation, of needing to hold back in some way. And of course, Mars is almost the opposite on the surface, right? Mars is about taking action, having confidence, going out there. Saturn invites us to think more deeply as to what's going to work for the big picture. But Mars is very immediate. Mars doesn't necessarily think about the big picture. It is very focused on what it is feeling now and expressing it to heck with the consequences. So here we have this contrast, but really what I think this is going to be is a lot of us looking at ourselves and realizing how we have used our own sacred masculine energy in healthy ways, but more importantly, in unhealthy ways as well. It isn't just this connection, but just two days later, um, October 1st is when the full moon will perfect. So this aspect of Mars and Saturn is happening under the light of a full moon, but the full moon perfects right around October 1st. And what is very interesting about this full moon is that it's in the sign of Aries, the same sign that Mars is in, but it is happening close in the sky in conjunction to Chiron. Chiron is slowly but surely moving through the sign of Aries right to the middle of the decade. And we have been since late last decade and right to the middle of this decade, we are learning about bringing healing to masculine energy that Aries represents and to understand and explore and expose the wounds that are there to sacred masculine energy. Now you add the full moon, you add the emotionality of this energy, of the full moon energy. You add the vulnerability, that sense of being emotionally exposed that Chiron can represent. And it does suggest that of this larger Mars retrograde season, it is gonna be this end of September, beginning of October, where the larger lessons, the real opportunity to do profound work on ourselves, to heal ourselves, to integrate the lessons that have been presenting itself to us throughout 2020, this is when they are going to be most on the surface. Saturn there is saying we only have so much power. There is restriction, there is limitation. I'm thinking about the serenity prayer, the serenity affirmation, however you wanna understand it which perfectly speaks to Mars and especially a Mars retrograde season. So the serenity affirmation is grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Those are three states of power. And those are the three sacred lessons and the distinction, making that distinction is part of the sacred opportunity that Mars brings. And I do think all of us in at least one area of life are going to feel this serenity affirmation very much on the surface where we are gonna to have to look at where we have power, where we don't, and to cultivate the wisdom, to understand the distinction. Because a lot of times we tell ourselves where we don't have power, but really we do. We just don't wanna own it. Or we don't wanna look at the consequences of owning that power. And there are also a lot of times where we genuinely do have a sense of agency. Now, I know that there are some people out there who might think that, and I respect it completely, there are some people in this lifetime who have a sense that everything is a manifestation of your own thoughts and you know, very law of attraction way of looking at the world. And I respect that completely. 
I think that the law of attraction is one principle, but just when you think you have it down, just when you think you know it and you're in that zone, here comes an opportunity for you to cultivate self-knowledge. Here comes an opportunity for you to understand that the converse is also a spiritual law. And that is that we are powerless as well. We have tremendous power, but sometimes the spiritual lesson is surrender is understanding that sometimes there's a higher wisdom playing out. And as part of the mystery, we can't know, especially in the moment, we can't know what that may lead to that could be good. Now that isn't about being passive. It isn't about having acceptance for the things that we do control, but it is about understanding that both are a part of the world that we have created together, that we've co-created together, is that there will be times when we are certainly feeling that sense of a connection of an interaction where it is that we can focus our thoughts and feel that things are manifesting but just when you think you know here comes pluto here comes a retrograde mars to say you know wait a minute you might not know anything you might not know that humility is actually one of the great spiritual truths, spiritual lessons as well. And if this energy of late September, beginning of October is meant to show us anything, it may very well be to have humility as well. Now consider this as well with Chiron slowly moving through the sign of Aries. Um, we have been asked to consider the role of police, uh, of law enforcement, of soldiers, right? All of these, it is Aries and Mars as a planet that uh, are the providence, the patrons of these particular roles in society. And as I said, when I did the Chiron special horoscope overview here on YouTube, it's been up on YouTube for a couple of years now, I spoke about how I feel like we are gonna go on a journey where we are going to see these roles differently. We're going to understand the toll, the vulnerability differently as well. And especially right now, so many of us are looking at, are talking about all the ways in which we have assigned all these different planets to police officers. Police officers are Mars, okay? What I mean by that is, it is Mars that is the patron of police officers and there are times when we need them. But we have asked police officers, especially in the Western world, especially in certain places more than others, we ask them to be the moon in terms of caregivers. Uh, we ask them to be uh, social workers, right? This is Jupiter I'm thinking of here. We ask them to take on so many different archetypal roles that the role of police officer where Mars is the patron of police officer, it's almost like it isn't fair and it adds all these different layers. And I know that as we had Saturn in Aquarius, now that's a whole other conversation, but um, this very shocking phrase, Aquarius shocking phrase of defund the police started to show up. But I actually think that um, it, that is meant to be shocking on the surface, but it isn't about that. It is actually about a more holistic way to understand how it is that we interact with each other, how it is that we interact with the world. And I actually think that it is inviting us, if we allow ourselves to go to Chiron in Aries, it is allowing us to consider where it is that we are asking those who are meant to embody Mars for us in the world, we're asking them to also embody the moon, also embody Neptune, also embody Jupiter. If you understand the archetypes, you can understand these correlations. And there actually are other people who can fill those roles much better than uh, someone who is meant to embody Mars for us. All planets have a function. And so interestingly, that is something that we are going to be looking at a whole lot in 2021. I'll have a video up for that as well for the collective. 2021 is a huge year, let me tell you. With Saturn and Uranus squares, uh, it is going to be a very powerful time. But let's bring it back to right now. I do think that with all this Aries energy, Mars energy, 
this can show us and give us insights into um, what it is that it means to be in law enforcement, what the limitations are of that, where the vulnerabilities are in that, where we may feel vulnerable interacting with law enforcement. And so my hope is with Saturn there, we are encouraged to cultivate maturity. And my hope is that with Chiron being activated, we are encouraged to bring genuine healing and a more holistic perspective because ultimately that is what is going to be called for during this time collectively speaking and personally of course that sense of opening that sense of vulnerability and exposure that ultimately can lend itself to meaningful transformation that lasts it may not be comfortable but on the other side of it is authenticity genuine healing and that is when we can be our most authentic selves. So as we navigate further and we move into October, it is going to be right around October 8th that we will have Mars connecting with Pluto and then nine days later connecting with Jupiter. And this again, conversations of tension, part of an ongoing dance. And this can be a time when we are feeling more exhausted, we are feeling more tired, or we are just looking at power, who has it and who doesn't, how to claim our own power, own the power that we do have. And we may see more people feeling very determined to be part of moving individuals towards change, moving the collective towards change or facilitating transformation within social structures. Now, as we navigate further, it is going to be right in the middle of November, right around the 14th is when Mars will officially go direct. Make sure you are paying attention to what is happening in your life at this time, because it is going to be here that we are going to see the events of late July differently. We will get a fresh insight, a new understanding, a burst of clarity that is needed is going to happen here. This is where Mars returns to where he was way back in late July. And as we navigate further, it is going to be right around Christmas Eve that the final important connection that Mars is going to make is going to take place with Pluto. Now, the fact that this is happening at a time when many people are considering um, connecting with others, right? Now, of course, because of what is transpiring in the world right now, there is an ongoing pandemic taking place. I do think looking outside of just Mars retrograde season, it is going to be the conjunction uh, in December, in the middle of December, uh, that is when, uh, happening on the winter solstice, the 21st of December, the rare conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter, the great conjunction as it's called, and that is going to happen in the sign of Aquarius. When Saturn first went and dipped into Aquarius way back in March, that was social distancing, right? Restriction and in a very social energy of Aquarius. I do think that that conjunction is going to be very hopeful. That's when some good news could transpire in terms of what's possible. More people are going to be able to connect and willing to connect as well. But then we also have this very stressful energy happening uh, under the same sky of Mars and Pluto. Now, this to me is especially intriguing. On the one hand, I want to say, if it is that you know that there are certain environments or certain people when you interact with them you feel like your buttons get pushed rather easily you feel more stressed uh, you feel more impatient right some people have that especially in their families this may be a good time to practice self-care in fact i think that there may be uh, a lot of uh, contentious energy around um, around what is taking place for us in the spaces that we go into. And it is going to be that much more important to cultivate kindness, to keep kindness at the forefront. But of course, um, this can also be opportunities to ask ourselves more profound questions, to understand what the larger transformation has meant for us and has been trying to teach us where it is now that we're ready to allow the change to sink in more deeply because it is going to be as we begin 2021 that a whole lot of us are going to be thinking 
2021 is going to be different. Now, of course, it's going to be different for the collective. But also, I think a lot of us on personal levels as well, after coming out of 2020, 2020 has provided us the rare opportunity to stop, to be still, to connect with whom it is we really are, to, in the stillness, see what's really in us, what we really want to do. And as it is that we are coming out of or, or finding ways to have to join society again, um, a lot of people are finding themselves back in same environments or same interactions and either they're feeling very grateful to be there and feeling really happy about it. I have a new level of gratitude for the roles that they had. But a whole lot of people I feel are realizing that the roles that they've been in are not resonating with whom it is they have come to understand themselves to be. Where it is that people have connected with a deeper truth, it is going to be these aspects that will then invite us to start implementing those changes. Because a lot of people I think are gonna go back to the same role and it's just not gonna feel right anymore and it's just not gonna work for them anymore. And that has been part of the great reset that has been taking place. It's been an opportunity to be still and in that stillness, come to know whom it is we really are beyond the busyness and the hustle and bustle that we can lose ourselves in. We've been granted an opportunity to know ourselves more deeply and to ensure that we are aligned with something that feels more like truth. It is going to be Mars that is going to invite us to embody that truth, to be that truth, to live that truth more fully than we have before. As we enter the new year, it is going to be right around the 3rd of January that Mars will leave shadow soon after in January will leave the sign of Aries as well, not to return again well into the future. So I think that a lot of people out there are going to feel like a huge sense of relief just as 2021 is beginning and very quickly the energy starts to feel like it shifts and for the better. What I love about this transit for us, well look, I love how it is helping us to understand our personal power more differently. I love how it is helping us to be more embodied, to live more fully in the here and now, to know ourselves as fully alive and to become aware of where it is that there have been restrictions to our aliveness and where it is that we're ready to demonstrate genuine courage and bravery to overcome those restrictions so that we can truly be more purely ourselves in the world. Now, I do also want to add as a footnote, I know that there are people who are thinking about Mars and they're thinking about the virus because Mars is such a physical energy and because some of the intensity and also because Mars is heat, right? It's an active heating principle. And it is, of course, uh, the virus that's happening right now, one of the uh, ways in which it is making itself known, one of the symptoms is fevers, right? That tends to be the providence of Mars as well. And what I can say uh, about that is give Mars something to do, please, in your own life. Take action. But also, I do think that if that's something you're worried about in your own life, consider your individual chart because your individual chart will be able to reveal not only if there are vulnerabilities there, but can also provide you with tools so that you are able to empower yourself. And with Mars, there's nothing like action. It is in taking some action to trust yourself, to honor yourself, to move forward. And even in the face of feeling a sense of power struggle, power games, there's also the awareness of where it is that you can choose not to participate in them and instead redirect your energy in a way that is genuinely empowering to you. As a collective, we may be more willing to talk about power struggles, power games, where they're fair, where they really are not, 
and where it isn't working for us as a collective anymore, this is where we will be more motivated to do the work that change requires. Collectively, certainly. But also, some of the most powerful changes that are set to take place are going to be on the individual level. Mars can be very individualistic, especially in the sign of Aries. It is when we cultivate wisdom to ensure that the actions that we are taking are rooted in higher principles, that the truth we align with and the truth we become becomes that much more genuine, that much more enlightening, and that much more inspiring as well. Well, thank you so much for watching. And once again, stay tuned for the Mars Retrograde Special Horoscope Preview Horoscopes coming up right now for each and every sign. And of course, if you want the whole version of this video, you can download that on my website, NadiaShaw.com, or you can access it for free along with all the different special horoscopes I have in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your trust. It'll be a great transit. Enjoy. Hello, fabulous superstar Aries. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from late July 2020 right to the first days of January 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, this is a Mars retrograde season set to take place in your sign. Mars is your ruling planet. And so when it is that Mars goes retrograde, it means that much more to you. It represents a time of personal reflection and deeper truths being revealed, most notably about you. But it is now that some of those truths are likely to come about through moments that feel challenging, that may feel stressful. But what I can say is that this is a time when you will grow, you will transform, you will change. And on the other side of this larger retrograde season, you may find yourself transformed in ways that last for the rest of your life. And I don't say that lightly. This is an incredibly important time frame. Hello, fabulous superstar Taurus. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This Mars retrograde season will take place entirely with Mars in the sign just before yours. And what that suggests is that there is a whole lot stirring within you, in your soul, in your psyche, and in your spirit. This might be a time when it feels as if secrets are revealed, whether it is about you, things you hadn't realized about yourself or about others. And it may also be a time when you are uncovering some truth about your own motivations. This ultimately can be a powerfully cleansing time, but sometimes we don't know what it is that needs to shift or change on an energetic level until it is that we feel discomfort or discontent. And that may be part of this time for you as well. Hello, fabulous superstar Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope for the Mars retrograde season going from July 26, 2020 to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it is going to be Mars that will spend this retrograde season moving through a part of the sky for you that has to do with friendships, and group endeavors and that's just the start of it but the fact that this part of the sky is considered social it does have to do with your interactions with others it means that either it will be other people who will embody this mars energy for you and the way in which that they come into your life hang around or feel like they're coming back around may be especially prominent but it's also the efforts that you put into a group endeavor covered here. Now, in a more lofty sense, this is the part of the sky that has to do with mass media being known in a larger way. And that may be part of your motivation during this time. Hello, fabulous superstar Cancer. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it is going to be this Mars retrograde season that will be entirely at the very top of your sky. This is considered an especially consequential area of the chart. 
It has to do with your own sense of destiny, the goals that you have for your life, but also aligning with a higher, more loving vision for your life than perhaps you knew before. On a more practical level, this speaks to our career and us taking action towards our life purpose. And where it comes to Mars, action is key. In fact, this is going to be a time when you may be pouring energy towards some larger desire or something that you are wanting to manifest. However, along the way, Hello, fabulous superstar Leo. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope covering July 26th, right to January 3rd. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is a phenomenal and important transit. For you in particular, this part of the sky that Mars will be in throughout this transit, it speaks to understanding your place in the world, not just literally, but spiritually as well. Where is it that you feel you are able to engage others as someone who carries wisdom, as a spiritual teacher, but also where is it that you allow these gurus into your life? Now, what I really love about this part of the sky, though, is that it is about putting things into place that allows you to manifest bigger and better in the fullness of time. In fact, it will be at the end of this transit as we move into January 2021 that all that you learn, all the ways in which you refine, all the ways in which you gain. Hello, fabulous superstar Virgo. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope covering July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is a remarkable and important transit for you. This Mars retrograde season will occur in a part of the sky for you that has to do with profound and meaningful transformation, regeneration, and rebirth. Mars retrograde ensures that the rebirth is truly from the inside out. This part of the sky also connects to resources and your relationship to financial institutions. All of this says that this is a time that is going to invite you to consider wealth itself, riches itself, help you to understand what it is within you that you can define as resourceful and how it is that you can attract resources, including financial resources into your life. So there is a lot to talk about here. One of the key characteristics, an important part of this Mars retrograde season will be Hello, fabulous superstar Libra. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope covering July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, this is a phenomenal and important transit, especially for you. The ruling planet of your opposite sign is spending a retrograde season in your opposite sign. This speaks powerfully to partnerships of all kinds, romantic, professional, and otherwise. There is going to be a moment of honesty, really looking at your own feelings, in some cases complex, in other cases maybe more straightforward. And there will very likely be at least one notable reality check as well. It is this transit that is all or nothing. It will make or break partnerships. It will either help you to realize the depth of connection and understanding and help you to dedicate yourself that much more to the partnerships you find yourself in. Hello, fabulous superstar Scorpio. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is set to be a profoundly important time for many out there, but I think that is more so for you. Your ancient ruling planet, Mars, is going to be part of an ongoing dance with your modern ruling planet, Pluto. These two planets aren't the only ones involved in the larger dance, but we've got Jupiter there close to your ruling planet as well, magnifying Plutonian energies. And what this says is what is happening in one area of life isn't just limited to that area of life. 
There is a sense of self-knowledge and connecting with what is true for you coming forward. And there's a sense now that what is happening, especially in your daily life, with your work, with your health, Hello, fabulous superstar Sagittarius. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. It is a phenomenal astrological transit without a doubt as Mars retrograde season takes place in a part of the sky for you that has to do with winnings. It has to do with creative fulfillment as well as the creations that you bring forward. Self-actualization is covered here along with your children, the children you have, the children you want. Now, wherever Mars goes, we feel the need to pour that much more energy into that area of life. And that certainly is true for you. There may very well feel like there is that much more to do now, that much more that there's a desire to gain, but a sincere desire to have some agency, to feel like you're more in control, in particular with these particular areas, is going to be part of the guiding principle now. Hello, fabulous superstar Capricorn. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, this is a phenomenal transit designed to help us to understand ourselves and our power. For you, this Mars retrograde season is going to take place with Mars at an angle, which brings with it that much more a sense of urgency. You add to this the fact that Mars will be making key connections with big power players in your sign, well, it does mean that where Mars is traveling through, having to do with home and your past and your family of origin, and you feeling at home with yourself, well, this work becomes that much more imperative, that much more urgent, and that much more on the surface. It is as if a part of you is ready to truly be at ease, to find a deeper layer of self-acceptance and a deeper layer of forgiveness. But sometimes acceptance takes work. Sometimes forgiveness takes a whole lot of work and that work isn't always work that we're doing with others. Hello, fabulous superstar Aquarius. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is a remarkable transit. As Mars moves through its home sign, it is going to highlight your mind, your communication, your curiosity. This is also part of the sky connected to your neighborhood and making connections more locally. Your siblings, your cousins are covered here and it is Mars that can bring with it renewed passion and motivation and action. But there's another side to Mars and that is aggression. Not necessarily the easiest energy, but when it is that we tap into the higher end of Mars, great focus and determination become possible. It allows us to own our power more fully, to trust it and to make great things happen. And so for you, it is going to be the development of mind and... Hello, fabulous superstar Pisces. Welcome to your Mars retrograde special horoscope going from July 26, 2020, right to January 3rd, 2021. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. This is a phenomenal time as part of a year that I think is changing priorities, changing directions for a whole lot of us out there. Mars ultimately is about understanding our power, the limits of it, but also authentic power and how to best empower ourselves. Now for you, you are going to get an accelerated course in this now. I'm not promising the easiest transit. There is a lot of stress indicated here and frustration. But when we have energy like this, developments and forward movement is pretty much guaranteed. Now for you, your sense of empowerment is going to come about through two distinct ways. One is working on self-esteem issues. Where it is that it's long overdue is going to come to the surface now. 
But I think more importantly, more viscerally for a lot of Pisces out there, this is going to represent a time where finances are going to be part of what feels challenging or stressful.